So I'm going to show you guys why an automatic transmission, not a CVT, an automatic transmission is better if your vehicle does not have low range. I repeat it, an automatic transmission is better if your vehicle does not have low range. Now before I start this video, I want to thank everyone that's been supporting me and buying the stickers. And if you want to support my channel for free, all you have to do is just spend a little bit of time and keep those ads rolling. You know those ads from the beginning, you know, on the beginning, the middle and the end of the videos. If you want to support my channel, um, the easiest and f a free way to do it is just to spend a little bit more time and just be patient and rent, let the um, adverts run. Now if you come over here and follow me, we're going to go through this track. And along this track, it's not a hard track, it's just, you know, a basic one. Um, but along the way, there's little bit, bits of steps and stuff like that that I'm going to show you. So if you, um, if you see, for example, that one, um, that will be a good example uh, to drive over on a vehicle with no um, low range gearing and an automatic transmission. And I'll go through, I'll pick bad lines this time. I'll go against, I'll go against what I normally um, tell people to do. So I'm going to pick bad lines, go through ruts, and um, I'll go through here, here, and those ruts all around. So I'll give you a little bit of basic rundown of how an automatic transmission works, just for you to uh, get the picture. So I'll keep it as basic and as simple as I can. It's more complicated than this, but put it this way. An automatic transmission has what you call a torque converter. That's the one that basically controls or allows the vehicle to not move, so the engine to be disconnected from the actual vehicle drivetrain when it's stopped, okay, without a clutch. So um, let's put it this way. Get a fan, right? Um, a fan blows this way, and there's another fan or another set of blades um, that that's not um, that doesn't have a motor. Okay, what happens if the fan that's got a motor blows this way? The fan and this will catch the air and will start turning the other way, right? That's how it works. So imagine inside the torque tor converter. Let's keep it simple again. This it's it's set up like that. But rather than f air flowing through one fan to another, it's your transmission fluid. So the fan, the blades of the fan is designed in a way so that the the angle of the blades dictate the amount, the volume of fluid that it, that's being thrown to the other fan, okay? Now depending on the angle of the blades and everything else behind the vehicle, that then dictates what, what's called a stall speed. So meaning when you hit the brakes, when your vehicle is stationary, that, that main fan, it's connected to the engine, keeps blowing fluid okay and it blows this other fan but it's not strong enough the, it's not strong enough so it, it then engages this other fan okay until you increase the revolutions in the engine so you put your foot down and then it, it throws more fluid and then the other fan starts to catch okay so stall speed is basically that so how much rpm do you need to throw do you need to give to this fan to have enough volume of fluid to engage the other fan, thus engaging the vehicle's drivetrain, okay? So that is why when you drive off-road with an automatic transmission, and if, say, if you drive through a rut and your um, wheel um, goes up against a rock or a rut like this, the vehicle stops, okay? And it takes you more RPM or more uh, gas to engage the drivetrain to move over the rut. And it's the same theory. It's the same theory inside the um, torque converter. That's, that's basically what happens. Okay. So, what I'm trying to get at is, if this was a man, if I was driving a manual transmission, how would you go over this without low range gearing, without reduction gears on your drivetrain? You'll have to either a 
give it momentum, so speed up and over, or, or B, give it more revolutions before you disengage the clutch and then violently go up the curb or the obstacle, okay? So what I'm trying to say to you is that I can drive over the same obstacle in an automatic transmission in a much slower pace, controlled and slower pace, minimizing the risk of damage and minimizing the risk of damage to the actual track as well. So how I do it is I drive over as close as I can to the obstacle, okay? And then as soon as my wheel, my tire hits the obstacle, then I give it just that enough revolutions for the tra transmission to engage and I go up and over, okay? And I'm always ready with my left foot on the brakes. So when I go up and over, because it's going to just suddenly just go jump like this, I'm ready to hit the brakes if anything, if I need to go you know, over, up and over and then down again or whatever it's the next obstacle is. So I always control it with my left foot. So it's like driving a goal cat, right foot on the gas pedal, left foot on the brakes. This is what I call left foot braking in an automatic transmission. So that's why when you guys watch my video, it's um, well pretty boring compared to other channels. There's no high revving, mud slinging action going on. It's always slow and controlled. And that is why, because I drive an automatic transmission, and as explained, I can go through obstacles slower without low range gearing. Again, this is only for vehicles with no low range gearing. If you have low range gearing, it changes the whole thing. Um, and that's a different story for another video. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this content, subscribe down the bottom, like the video as well, and some other videos on this side. Thanks for watching. Catch ya.